Dan Roshan, and today I'm joined with John Williamson, and I'm going to tell you a little bit more about him, and, and we're going to be having a conversation today, he and I, about uh, mindset in the inner game. And, you know, really it is about understanding, uh, John's a firm believer that, that people buy before they buy products and services, but buried in that cliche is a secret to success that few ever discover. And we're going to be diving deep into that secret today. And by the way, John Williamson is one half of the big idea guys. And, and when I hear that, John, I want to ask like, hey, what's the big idea? You know, so. <laughs> I just spoke to you, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> Welcome, John. Thanks for joining me today. Really cool, John. Looking forward to it. All right. So, uh, so John, so we were just having a little bit of a conversation about, you know, a couple of things that are going on in the world right now and really about a foundation of being in understanding like who we are being and that's going to impact what we're going to do, which will impact, you know, what we'll achieve or, or what we'll have. And so before we get started, I just want to tell us a little bit about yourself and, and let's, I'm just curious about what your thoughts are on the current state of affairs in the world today and, and uh, you know, introduce yourself if you could. Yeah, sure. So um, I've been doing what I've been doing for like 30 years now. So I started indirect sales. Um, I think I told uh, down the very, very brief story last time I actually was in real estate for about six months of my, of my junior life from uh, when I was about 17. And when I say I was in real estate, my father owned a real estate agency in, in, over here in the UK. And um, I joined him. I sort of joined. I didn't actually volunteer. It was like when you've been putting the signs up every week for the past two years after school and at the weekends and all that kind of stuff. And it was just naturally assuming I was going to join the business. So I, I did. And um, I, we lasted about six months. And uh, <laughs> we had this big oak desk in his office, like this huge oak desk with a leather inlay, you know, kosher proper thing. And uh, we ended up one day with the, the desk, both at chin height, trying to turn the desk over on each other. And I said, you know what? I don't think this business is big enough for both of us. And seeing as it's your business, maybe I better leave. And he said, that's quite a good idea. So I left. And uh, that was my, my total experience with the, with the uh, real estate business. But I went from there into direct sales, selling life insurance. So I spent the next seven years in a connected but disconnected industry. So it's still the same process. Belly same to belly. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. All that stuff. Get your numbers in and all that kind of thing. So I spent the next seven years doing that. And then um, they brought something called the Financial Services Act into the UK, which meant you had to become a licensed advisor and take tons of exams and all that kind of stuff. And I very much saw myself as a salesperson. So I exited stage right and set up my own consultancy, um, sharing with businesses how to improve the sales and marketing to get results. And that, that's basically where I've come from. This is an interesting time. I mean, I, I came out in... I came out of school in 81 and we had a big recession in the UK it was coming out of hyperinflation, was coming out of all sorts of problems and things like that. Um, and then we've had other ups and downs and deflations and inflations and, and Black Fridays and Blue Mondays and all sorts of stuff going on over the years. Nothing like this. Yeah. Yeah. And I mean, right, right now the world is just, I mean, it, it's just something that I don't think, you know, we were just talking about, you were just sharing with me about, you know, did we, we think at Christmas lunch, were we thinking that today we, the world would have evolved in the manner that it has? And and I definitely agree not. I don't, I don't think anybody would have predicted that, you know, that the turmoil that we've experienced is yeah. uh, rather dramatic. Yeah. Overused term, but it is unprecedented. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. And so, what's going to happen next? Um, we individually need to get prepared for the government is not going to be able to save us. The corporations are not going to be able to save us. It's down to us on a one-to-one -one individual basis. You, I'm looking at you in your eyes, you for your family, for the people around you, the people important to you. Now's the time to get your game on. Right. So tell, tell me more about that, John. So get your game on. How can somebody get their game on? So my principle is, so let's go back to the whole concept of what we're going to be talking about today. So the concept was, People buy people before they buy products and services. You know, that was one of the very first things I was taught when I went into financial services. The guy walked in the room and he said, I'm going to I'm going to give you the big secret. He told us that and then literally walked out the room, closed the door and left us there for about 20 minutes thinking about it. And we're all like, that's it. People buy people before they buy products and services. He dropped the mic. That was it. Yeah, boom. And off I went. And so I was introduced that day one. First thing I ever learned in sales was people buy people before they buy products and services. It took me seven years to figure out what the heck that meant. Okay. The learning curve of how, how does that relate to sales and the products you sell and, and, and giving service and all that kind of thing, creating value. But what I've since done since then, moving along with my life and learning more and more and teaching people and, and doing big seminars and things like that is, is simply this, that preceding that one statement, we have to understand something. 
Yes, people buy people before they buy products and services, in which case, singularly, the most important sale you're ever going to make is selling you on you. Yeah, it makes complete sense because if you don't believe in yourself, then everything else sort of moot point out, you know, it's just, right. Yeah. If people yeah. buy people before they buy products and services and yeah. you ultimately are the product. If you've not sold you on you, why would you expect them to buy you? Your uncertainty, your deliberation, your your fear, everything oozes out of you in your body language, in the language you use, in the way you conduct yourself, in your behaviors, your actions, it seeps out of you. And I tell you this, certainty sells. You have to get yourself in a certain state because that will transfer to the customer and the customer will then buy you and then buy whatever else you're selling next. It makes no difference. So John, so how do we get certain with ourselves? Okay, so the concept I always share with people, I'm just gonna draft it up on the wall behind me. Okay, here. yeah, cool. It's a whiteboard actually, it's not a wall. I don't want anybody freaking out that I'm drawing on the walls. You were um, the guy, you were the guy that the mom and in, in, you know, when you were like yeah, a yeah. five year old, she was like, Johnny. Yeah. <laughs> it's not on the walls. I never got out of the system. <laughs> so let's talk about today. Let me just make sure I'm in eye line here. So let's just talk about today, the result being money. Okay. Let's keep it nice and simple. The result, though, could be anything we want to um, change in life, any transformation we want to take. So it could be emotional, it could be physical, it could be in relationships. It doesn't really matter. The same process is going to get us there. Let's just talk about making money right now. Seems John, quite let's do, let's do the money, but let's parallel to that if you're if you're interested, because a lot of time right now, right now, with with a lot of the instability that's going on in the, in the world right now, people are looking for connection and unity as well. Fine. Right. So but it's the same. It's the same thing. I just want to point that same out. Does. It doesn't have to be money. It could be same love. Life. It could be connection. Is that correct? Could be connection could be relationships. It could be yeah. on health, fitness, anything. Yeah. It all, all right, boils cool. down to this process. And you all can't right, get away from cool. it. So right. it starts with this. If you want some of this, whatever this is, uh, then you have to take some action. I don't know about you, Dan. You've been at this a fair time now. Nothing happens without you. You can read um, the secret. You can go and lie on your bed and, and manifest and, and think about wonderful things and do picture boards and all that kind of stuff. But if you don't get your ass in gear, guess what happens? You ain't going to get nothing. <laughs> you have to take action. Yeah. Yeah. However, all action is not created equal. Sure. Sure. You can get one person taking massive, immediate, um, authentic action, which gets results. You can have somebody else who appears to be taking tons of action, but just getting nowhere, spinning the wheels. And a lot of people feel that. A lot of people I talk to go, yeah, but I do work hard. I've got a work ethic. I do, I do have the right attitude, but I'm still not getting there. So we need to unpick what it takes in this ladder to get there. So preceding action always is something called decision. Okay. So you decide. And you then have take to action. Make a decision. Some okay, people make good decisions, some people make bad decisions. And getting ourselves in a state where we're consistently making good decisions is how we take more and more of the right action, which gets to this result. This could be health, it could be eating, it could be yeah. diet, it could be making money, it could be in your business, in my business, it makes no difference. Yeah. Preceding decision is questions. Your ability to create and make great decisions is all down to the questions you repeatedly, consistently ask yourself. We are creatures of habit. The reason why people keep getting the same results is because they keep taking similar actions because they keep making the same decisions because they keep asking the same questions of themselves and or of people around them. So that's that's the that's the hack right there, the, quest, the questions? The questions is one of the hacks. There's okay. more preceding parts of this. Okay, okay. What enables one person to ask amazing, outstanding, high quality questions and another person keep asking idiot questions over and over and over again. And I see it in your eyes, Dan, you know <laughs> it. We, we, we've hit pay dirt, yeah? Yeah, it's, yes, sir. It's beliefs. Got it. Whatever your beliefs are, determine your questioning ability. That in turn determines your decisions and then your actions and then the results at the end of the day, whatever that might be. Now, we, we know that successful people, they think and they act differently, so that's success, than normal people. We can all see that around us. We all see that successful people are doing something differently on a habitual basis. Their actions, their thinking is different than other people. If Whenever you get to sit down with super sharp people, successful people, people who've already got somewhere, if you look at their actions and if you look at their thinking, they're always different than the general sure. population. Yeah, They've just, something inside of them at some stage made them click. And it's all down to these beliefs over here. So here's what you can do. You can shortcut this whole damn thing, change your beliefs, Change your results. Okay. Simple as that. But Assuming that you do the in-between. 
Assuming that you do the in-betweens, you don't just sit on your apps. Yeah. Yeah. But the bottom line is when you change your beliefs, then you automatically change your questions. But here's the deal. If you change your questions, you can also change your beliefs. You already know 87% of all real estate agents fail in this business. And you also know it doesn't have to be that way. If you're a real estate agent and you're looking for consistent and predictable income, I invite for you to get your free copy of Real Estate Evolution, the 10-step guide to CPI, consistent and predictable income for real estate agents. And you can do so when you visit www.therealestateevolution.com. I'll share with you your book that I authored to show you the way. And it's free. You just have to pay for the shipping. Thanks. Great. Yeah. And then you get a feedback loop there. Okay. When you change the decisions which you started to make, then guess what happens? All of a sudden you see good stuff happening, so your beliefs change. Okay. When you start taking more affirmative action, it's the right action, it's action that brings results. Guess what happens to your beliefs? They Got change. It. Got it. Which opens up the opportunity for more and smarter questions, and then it keeps on going up and down, up and down, up and down. Let me ask you about the emotion in between here. Because I've heard what you're sharing in a different concept. Actually, two it's a variation of two concepts that I've, I've, I've uh, experienced, which is, you know, be, do, have, and then also um, the programming leading to the thoughts, leading to the feelings, leading to the actions, leading to the results, leading to the program. And that seems like a variation of that minus the emotional aspect of it. So okay. how does emotion play into that? In, in what aspect there, Dan? Well, so if you feel great, okay, so the programming leads to the thoughts, leads to the feelings, Right. And so now you're, you're, you're plus that thought process and you feel great, then you're more likely to take okay. out actions that are going to be great actions. If you feel crappy, you're more likely to, you know, take crappy actions. So I'm just curious on how the feelings, you know, in, interplays in, in regards to that. Cause I, that is brilliant, John. I love that. It's, um, here's my process. And you mentioned be doing have, and I don't know in what context you're saying be doing have. So sure. let's cover it real, real quick. Okay. Okay. Three types of goals there are B goals. There are have goals and there are do goals. Okay, they're all variations of goals. When you speak to most people who are involved in goal setting, you go to the seminars and all that kind of stuff. When they're talking about goals, they're talking about generally speaking, 90% is have. Yeah. yeah. 10 will be do experiential stuff. Yeah. Most of it will be the car, the house, the, the 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 watch, whatever. Okay. Now here's the thing. Here's what I think people should focus 90% of the time on. Who do I need to be? Who do I need to be to be the type of person that gets that stuff? Right, right. Most people have got internal, emotional, incorrect dialogue. Let's put it that way. Because they they do some of this stuff and expect magic's going to happen. But they not be the person that are going to achieve that then or do that the action. That comes first. That comes first. Yeah. So the B goal always has to come first. Sure. And most people aren't prepared to make that transformation. So they're stuck where they are. I've got a poster up there. It says, you are where you are in life right now because it's exactly where your subconscious wants you to be. Your subconscious is an emotional goal-seeking device. Right. You thought your subconscious does not care about have and do. Right. It doesn't understand it. The subconscious doesn't understand red Ferraris. It's like, it doesn't mean anything to me. And it's the feeling, right? <laughs> it's the feeling yeah. that you have inside you about what that's going to mean to you in terms of yeah. what your respect or, or, or whatever, 101 different things for different people. Yeah. But that comes from, that's the emotional side of it. So what most people are doing is they're trying to engage their subconscious to hit goals by saying, this is what I want to have and do, whereas what they need to do is they need to engage the subconscious that the, the emotion sets in. Now, what I found is this, the B side of it is everything. Who do you need to become to be the type of person that gets this stuff? When people focus on that, everything changes. That's the foundation. That's the foundation. Yeah, everything else yeah. falls into place. So I spend very little time if I'm working with somebody on this have and do bit over here, but I spend a ton of time on who do you need to become? Give me an example of that if you, so, if you could. Confidence is a big thing. Sure. So people want to have all this stuff and they haven't got the confidence to take the action, to speak to bigger deals, to... Um, to say no when they, they should do that, you know, like, well, I just better say yes because that's the, but you know, all that kind of stuff down. So basically what I get people to do is write down a list of all the things that they need to change. Okay. Okay. So what are your goals? Who do you need to become? Uh, there was a guy who wrote a brilliant book on this called Noah St. John. Noah St. John wrote an amazing book called uh, Permission to Succeed. Okay. 
and he talks about affirmations instead of affirmations so okay. affirmations is where you affirm something which might be something like i am amazing uh, i i am successful i am whatever and the idea yeah. is you speak that over and over and over and over again and guess what happens not well, a lot <laughs> right. go back to where they are because they won't yeah. keep them up and, yeah. and the brain looks back in the mirror and goes i ain't seeing it like you might be saying it but i ain't seeing it so that ain't working for me the brain's real smart so affirmations as he describes it you ask your brain we wiped it off you ask your brain questions you ask different questions so you would say why am i always so successful why am i confident when i meet new people why am i why do i always make the right decisions and what happens when you engage your brain with a why question is what well, what happens what do you think dan it goes searching for an answer right because it's a closed question versus yeah so you have to come up with a question with an answer to that you have to come up and then it starts to spot and see the things that you need to do yeah. and what it will do you'll focus then on the times where you are confident so you may be confident over here but not over here but then it will start to pick up on the cues and give you a feedback loop Got it. and then you get yourself into the state where you're actually your brains recognizing that you can be that person and saying you can do that and then it, okay. it's, it brings all the other resourcefulness to the table if that makes sense does that make sense quickly absolutely yeah so the do goals is everything as far as i'm concerned if people would just sit down and go like take 10 minutes what do you want big house ferrari bang done 10 minute job N not a big deal okay uh, but what people do is they pour over that for weeks and get magazines and cut pictures out and all that kind of stuff and there is a there is a purpose for that yeah but the actual underlying thing which is going to make it happen is identifying the b goals who you need to become and then what what are you going to have to do to do it so part of it is better questions changing your beliefs which will enable you to make better decisions so that will come from the why questions constantly asking yourself why questions reframing what you, who you need to be with the why question um and then it's what physical actions do you need to take so here's the thing nowadays most most people are really scared to do new stuff well that's all, that's every day it's not just nowadays yeah. Well, I go back to when I was in direct sales and we were just uh -uh. chopping up the street with, you know, oh, we went in the first day. We went in the first day, Dan, and here's what happened. You were supposed to bring Prospect 100 list. Now, I think you guys all know what Prospect 100 list is. It's 100 people you're going to ring and, and say, hey, I've just gone into the life insurance business. So how about we sit down and have, a, you know, that kind of thing. So it's your mom, your sister, your, your next door neighbor, the guys you play soccer with, whatever. It's anybody you could gather. And I could see this coming because I'm a smart guy. So I went in without my prospect 100. I, I'm like, yeah, I'll bring it in tomorrow. And the guy <laughs> said, okay, that's absolutely fine, Mr. Williamson, because it was always Mr. Williamson and Mr. Tegg in those days. I've got a special job for you today. So I said, oh, great. So I'm thinking, look at these lot. They're all Muppets. They're all sitting there, dialing their friends and all this. And I'm getting a special job with the, with the sales manager. He took me downstairs, seven floors downstairs, and he walked me to um, a, a street with houses. He walked up to the first door. He knocked on it. And he said, Madam, this is Mr. Williamson. He sells life insurance. And he turned around and walked off and left me there. <laughs> Fantastic. <laughs> when she slammed the door on me and I walked back to the end of the path, he was stood there with me and he walked me to the next door. He said, carry on. That's what right. you're doing all day long. Yeah. It was like, you will do what needs to be done. You will face your fear. What did you learn about yourself when you did that? I, well, listen, um, I got it out of my way on the first day that cold calling is nothing. Yeah. yeah. It, it just made me do it. So from that point forward, I've never feared doing that kind of stuff ever again. Yeah. What most people do is they put it off. They put off doing the things they, they like the person they need to become like super confident, super thick skin, whatever they need to do, you need to go and get it done. Now, I heard a story years ago about, and I don't know how true this is, but in the parachute regiments in the army, right. when you when you first join, they don't care how how confident you seem or, or how whether you've done parachuting before and all that kind of stuff. They take you up, they throw you out, you hit the ground, they put you back in, they take you up, they throw you out, you hit the ground, they take you back, and they keep doing that all day long. They don't do it once. And they say, right. hey, we'll do that again next week. Or we'll come back and do that once a week for the next six months. They don't. They'd say, we're going to do it until you have no more fear. Right. So it just becomes a routine and it becomes something that's just in tune into you. And so all of a sudden what used to, you know, uh, scare you. Now all of a sudden it's just like, hey, no big deal. 100%. And yeah. again, if you look at uh, the B goals, most of the time that your, your success is just on the other side of one or two B goals. Like, what is that transformation you need to make? And then condition yourself into do it. There are a bunch of, you know, 
stuff you can do internally with things like the why questions and stuff like this. But yeah, you yeah. know what it is? You've got to identify ruthlessly what is it about what what B goals are between me and having that stuff. Okay. What are those B goals? What do I need to excel at? What do, what do I need to conquer? Whatever it is, go out and do it as much as you can, as quick as you can. I recently wrote the book Real Estate Evolution: The Ten Step Guide to CPI. Consistent and predictable income for real estate agents. I wrote this book because I have sold real estate since 2007 and developed an immense amount of experience and knowledge. During my journey, I've witnessed hundreds and maybe even thousands of real estate agents fail in this business. And I firmly believe that that's a shame. In Real Estate Evolution, I will show you the exact steps that I have used as a real estate salesperson to sell one to 15 homes every single month for the past 129 consecutive months. It took me more than two decades to learn the sales and persuasion techniques and more than one decade to master the real estate sales techniques to be able to produce the content that makes up this book. And it took me more than a year to write at a pace of three hours every single day. If you're a real estate agent and you're looking for consistent and predictable income in your business, I invite you to get the book, Real Estate Evolution. And you can get that by visiting www therealestateevolution.com and I'll even give it to you for free as long as you pay for the postage. And it's the why questions that will help you to identify those B goals that will be most impactful? Mostly, yeah. Most people will sit down and, and within within a couple of days they're coming back and go, wow, yeah, I've got my questions. I, I feel different. Just asking the questions is making me feel different about myself. Got it, got it, got it. Okay, so now we ask different questions, right? And going back to you, I, I'm uh, I shouldn't. I, I didn't want to guide you to race that, right? Because we had we, you had that nice uh, graph out there. So so we're, now we're asking different questions. So remind us what's next. So we've got questions. We've got uh, so we've got beliefs, questions, decisions, action, result. So decisions. So now we're asking different questions, and now we're making decisions based off of the answers from those questions. Tell yeah. us more about that. Yeah. So you, you're asking questions which are different than they would be before. Okay. Right. So you can relate this to, um, I don't know, let's let's relate it to dating just for fun, just to do something completely different, okay? And you get guys or gals both way around. How do I keep ending up in these dumb relationships where X, and they keep repeating, they keep getting the same kind of person in life, which isn't good for them, not respectful, doesn't nurture them, doesn't have whatever, okay? Well, why do they keep asking, why, why does that keep asking, sorry, why does that keep happening? Because they may keep making the same dumb decisions. Right. Because right. they haven't changed the same decisions. actions, right? Yeah, yeah. Exactly. So it's the same patterns all the time. If you want to break the pattern, you need to break one of those points. You need to change it dramatically and drastically. So okay. sometimes just making a decision to make better decision. Oh, sorry, making a decision to make decisions. Okay. Like you've never done before. Because guess what? Most people are not great decision makers. Sure. Agreed. I mean, just most people. Yeah. Are not. That's why salespeople exist. How do you become a better decision maker? So you. Um, there's a number of different ways you can do this. So I, I, I'm going to paraphrase a whole chunk of stuff into Got one it. thing. Yeah, yeah. Most people are over concerned about making the right decision, and they, sure. they 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 ponder and they think and they overthink and they go over it and and end up getting absolutely nowhere. We have a very famous guy in the UK. He's dead now, called Jimmy Goldsmith. You may or may not have heard of him. I haven't. No. Uh, Tiny Roland. You've ever heard of Tiny Roland? Yes. Yeah. 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 So they were. Tiny Roland was a, was an industrialist. He owned. Okay. Uh, yeah. Lots of factories and, and things all over the world. Uh, Jimmy Goldsmith was exactly the same. Okay? okay, they were in competition throughout their life. And I heard a radio interview when I was about 19, and it just completely changed everything for me. And, and on the radio interview, he was talking, the guy said to him, um, You know, how do you, how do you go on about making this decision? You're a billionaire. You know, there's something about what you do. He says, It's dead simple. He says, I've been right 51% of the time, and I've been wrong 49% of the time. And that 2% is maybe a billionaire. Oh, my God. <laughs> I had never and heard like, that before. And I was like, boom. <laughs> there it is. And, and basically, you know, I, I, when I was doing my seminars, I used to say to people that billionaires make decisions about what to do and what not to do faster than most people can choose, choose off a Chinese menu. Right. So, it, so it, fail it, faster. It, fail faster is basically what you're saying there. That's the yeah. I mean, I've right? got a book on my desk and it's actually called Fail Better. But okay. concepts are actually true. And, and here's what he here's, here's how he explained it. OK, he had one underlying question back down to questions. It always revolves around questions. Start listening for the smart questions that smart people ask and embed them into your own being. But he, he would do this. 
somebody would come to him with a, a, the next proposition, a big deal, a big conglomerate who's going to buy whatever. And he, he dealt in billions, okay? And he would pass it off to his lawyers and his accountants. They would go and do all the research and the due diligence and all that kind of stuff. And then they would come back into the room with him and he'd have one question. Okay. And the question was, what's the downside? Right, right. If I can live with the downside, we're doing it. He never focused on the upside. You know what most people do in life? They're like, they get sold on whatever they get sold on because of the promise of the riches, the promise of the glory or whatever. They never ask themselves what the downside is. And all he did is step by step as he built his business, as he acquired more cash and more wealth and the rest of it, he pegged it in. So every time he moved forward, he'd say to the next big opportunity, which could have lost him everything, if there was a downside to it, he'd look at it and say, nope, not doing it. Move on to the next one. So what's the downside? And can I live with that downside? Can I live with it? Simple and if that. I can live with that, then worst case scenario, I'm good. 100%. Uh, you know, it's not ideal because I want the upside. 100%. If I can live with the downside, I'm good. And we, most people get too focused on the upside. Sure. Where that, that one question just changed everything. It's just going to be a completely new perspective on thinking. Like you can very quickly make decisions and do it quite accurately because if you can live with the downside, we'll go and make the mistake. Sure. Okay. But it's not lost to your house. It's not lost to your health. It's not lost to your whatever. Yeah. But Family, it's what you're, yeah, right. Yeah, yeah. Seriousness, you've not put that into jeopardy and then act courageously with the decisions you made. Okay. Like take massive action. But most people, you know, the anti Robbins seminars, you know, it's like take massive action. But they don't spend too much time thinking about yeah, okay, there's not a foundation to that. Yeah, what's the decision making process? Right. And, and Anthony Robbins is superb at questions and beliefs. Superb guy to follow if you're looking if you're looking to take this further. Um, go get um, Awaken the Giant and Unlimited and, and uh, what's the other one? Unlimited Power. Unlimited Power is first book. Oh, unlimited yeah. Power within. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, get that. Um, he's brilliant at questions at, at showing you how questions. I think he has a saying which is uh, a quality life is quality questions or something like that. I don't right. know. Yeah. But you know, he's he's zoomed in on that that these questions make the big difference. Fantastic. Okay, so decisions and then actions. Yeah, where were we at? Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I should have kept it up there. <laughs> beliefs, questions, questions, decisions, actions. Beliefs, right. questions, decisions, action. All right. I'm following along. <laughs> I'm, I'm with you. <laughs> I'm so with you. I've only done this a thousand times before. All right. So now so now it's the actions that we take which are going to be when you take that foundation that you just described, it could be presumed that now you're going to take either different actions, better actions uh, or um, actions that will create the results that you're intending to have. Right. right. But it's not starting with that end point of what you want to have other than like sort of like a vision to it. Right. But that, but that's not, that's not the foundation of it. That's the outcome. That's the outcome. Yeah. Right. And, okay, great. And so now it's, uh, so now it's, we're, we're taking different actions and listen, my partner and I, Josh, on a yeah. daily basis, we look at the conversations we've had, the decisions we've made, the actions which have come out of it, good or bad. And then we try and go backwards and say, OK, what do our beliefs need to be in the future? Is there a new belief we need to adopt here, which is going to open us up next time around to a different way forward, to a different conversation, to a different way? So we're constantly going up and down that ladder. Yeah. Yeah. Looking at how we're conducting ourselves, what, what so you use it as a feedback loop too to, to oh, analyze it. Hey, here's what happened. Well, let's let's look backwards all the way to who we who were we being? Yeah. What you know? What actions? What decisions? What questions that caused this as the outcome? Hundred percent. And if we, we got a great outcome, work. then let's do more of that. And if it's a crappy outcome, then what do we need to believe differently than what we previously believed? Or who do we need to be? differently than we were previously being. Yeah. What do we need to believe differently about the world? What do we need to believe differently about ourselves? Mm -hmm. You know, the two main things, that internal, external. Yeah. And then from that you go, okay, so let's 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 modify, let's move forward. Let's and li listen, let's face it, the world is changing around us real fast. Oh my goodness. Really yeah. my goodness. Yeah. Right now we be we need to be more adaptive than we've ever been before. So we need to be insightful. We need to be able to control. And, and this is my system. This is the system I use, the system yeah. we use within our business. And it's constantly looking at, okay, is there a smarter question? Would a, a different question have helped us avoid that situation? Yeah, and I've been doing this for 30 years. Guess what? You still get sideblinded. Things happen, you weren't, you weren't prepared for it. What? You, know, you mean there's no, there's, no win, there's no winning line for me? <laughs> <laughs> you know it. You know it, Dan. Oh my goodness, John. Let's <laughs> let's 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 finish this up because it's about because we started with about the most important person 
for you to influence or to is yourself essentially. I think you said it a little bit differently than that. Telling you um, on you is the most yeah, important. Yeah. Player. And so what you're describing today is an exact process that could cause somebody to have more empowering belief system to be able to, you know, make better questions and de decisions and actions yeah. leading to results. Is that, is that yeah. correct? Yeah. Love it, man. Love it. It gets people out of the rut. It gets them more precise about their thinking. It enables them to experience um, results faster. And, you know, it's like, what's the other book I've got? I've got Fail Better. I've got, like, you look at the book titles. Yeah. Fail Better. Fail better. You know, you, there's, no, there's no way around this. We have to fail to get to where we want to go. Well, let's well, we only fail 49%. <laughs> Hopefully. 2%. Hey, Dan, I've got a question. Are you failing enough? I mean, that's the question. Yeah, yeah? Maybe, maybe not. Literally, maybe, maybe you need to push the limits. Sure. We push all the time. We're constantly pushing um, to, to see what work, what's going to work or not, what's not going to work. And we're not scared of that. Yeah, that's fantastic. That's fantastic, John. John, if somebody, i got to finish up. If somebody wants to get in touch with you, how can they get in touch with John Williamson? So we got. Um, you can either go through our um, our webpage, which is the Big Ideas Guys dot com. Okay. Big Idea Guys dot com, or you can go via um, John at the Big Ideas uh, Big Idea Guys dot com. <laughs> <laughs> you put that link in below the video. We'll handle that for you, John. No worries at all. John, thank you so much. Appreciate you. And um, I really appreciate you taking the time to uh, speak today. And it's a pleasure. And and uh, just uh, one quick reference there. I've, I've checked out your new book. It's oh. a buy. It's a buy. If, not just for the real estate business. I mean, yeah. that book has got a whole bunch of stuff in terms of proceduralization about getting to where you want to get in the rest of it. So you're in real estate. It's a buy. 110%. Thank you, John. Thanks for that. The kudos. Appreciate that. All right. Talk to you soon. Talk to you soon. Give us a thumbs up by clicking the like button below. Don't forget to subscribe to Get Rock Solid Coaching Channel and stay ahead of the game.